wish, we'll say, we'll uh, call the meeting for the budget committee September 28, 2015. Meeting order first with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, attendance wise, um, just to let you guys know, um, Larry Pickering resigned from the budget committee as the town council representative at their last meeting. Um, so their next meeting they have coming up, they'll be electing someone new. So um, right now we do not have a town representative as of today, um, but I do know that's on their agenda for the, I think this week or next week, I'm trying to remember, I think it's next week right next week yeah so they'll be they'll be voting on that and, and uh, finding an alternate as well just in case so um and i will follow up with uh, nathan and gail and see where we are with that as well so um let's get to old business real quick um approval we have two meeting notes to go through the august 24th meeting as well as the september 8th special meeting for the well so can i get a motion to accept the august 24th 2015 minutes motion to accept the august 24th 2015 minutes okay, dan smith can you get a second second mike lang any revisions anything you guys saw getting good at this patricia <laughs> I gotta tell you, you don't miss a lot. <laughs> no, when I read it, I'm like, you're getting good. Like, you're not missing much of anything anymore. So, kudos. I have nothing unless you guys saw anything. Yep. All right. Motion or, uh, for all those in approval of accepting the minutes of August 24th, say aye. 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 Abstentions? Do we have any? Good. All right. Next, on to the September 8th, 2015. Can I have a motion to accept those minutes? I make a motion to accept the minutes of September 18th. Craig? Second. Jeff? Any changes to that one? You even got the dollars right. I do not see anything on this one either. You guys good? I like this. You're making it easy on us. You're making it easy on us. Thanks, Patricia. Um, motion uh, approval to accept for uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 And ex abstentions, Meg, Mike, right? Okay. All right, minutes out of the way. Okay, so um, hopefully you all got a chance to read um, Dan's War and Peace, I'm kidding, um, <laughs> um, which was actually really helpful. But I uh, wanted to kind of spend some time going through the CIP, um, you know, looking over it, the thing that kind of um, was new to me because I haven't been as in-depth in this process as the amount of money that you guys were talking about. So um, if you want to kind of just give us an update and then if you guys have any questions, by all means, chime in and let, you know, raise your hand and we can go into it. So, Dan, you want to? All right. Um I'm really just going to hit on a few things okay. in this that I think are, are worth pointing out. I actually do want to start with one thing. The minutes from the meeting, the two meetings ago, were correct, but I did misspeak. Christine Bluen was at the first okay. um, CIP meeting that we had, um, and they do intend, this came not from her, but secondhand, that they, they do intend to present something. The board just has to do their work first before they can do it. So it, the timeline on that is a little unclear to us, but okay. it's in the works. Um, the Just going through, and, and I want to hit a few um, things that don't immediately reflect in this. Um, most of the things, um, the police department radios that need to be replaced, that's because the units are completely obsolete. According to Chief Sear, replacement parts are not available or unsupported. Um, it's a pretty large expense on their part. The roof at the DPW building, I put leaking parenthetically. Um, I 
under, we understand from Rick Molaski that is a bit of an understatement. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a hole. It, it's, well, it's multiple holes. Yeah. It's a membrane roof, and there are apparently a lot of little dime-sized holes in it that are letting water in or, or did this past winter. Um, some of that, I guess, can be attributed to the heavy snow load, but nobody really wants to chance seeing what will happen in another winter. Well, we got FEMA money for snow, right? So for today, snow removal. I, I'm, oh, okay. It wasn't for damage? I'm no. unclear. Yeah, no, it was for snow removal, and I don't even know if we got the full amount we asked for. I don't think we did. Did we get anything? I, I think we applied for 30 something. We got 17. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think we got, yeah, 17,000. I, I knew it was a small amount. Town Hall, um, the quarter million dollars for the boiler replacement in the ground floor bathrooms did raise a fair number of eyes um, when Rick was presenting it, but he does have some estimates that go behind that. The, I don't the, assume most of you have been in the downstairs bathrooms <laughs> at least once or twice. They are like something out of a 1950s high school, so they really are a lot. The McAllen Dam is not an immediate expenditure. Um, it's just something that Rick would like to start putting money away for, um, considering that, I mean, 1.3 to 1.4 million, a very rough estimate. Nobody really knows until they get in there and determine whether the pylons on either side of the dam are really actually stable. That's sort of the, the linchpin question, as he explained it to us. And that's today's estimate. Well, who knows what it could be in five, 10 years. Positively. Yeah. Um, the stormwater management, um, is again longer term items that Rick just wants to get in the budget and start putting money aside for. Um, both of those systems, as he explained it, are very antiquated, um, have issues presently, but he believes we can drag the lifetime out can longer. Um, the fund balance in water and sewer that I'm showing, I'm not clear how the special appropriation for the Macintosh well relates to that. So take it for what it's worth. It could be 800000 higher, or that may be accurate. I just don't know. Um, the big ticket items on that one, um, the pump station equipment at Bennett and Sewell is very old. Um, it has code issues. It has issues where the stations can sometimes get flooded and short out the electrical panels. Um, same thing with the pump station code and life safety improvements. It's basically, the pump stations just aren't a safe place to work in a storm condition because of the way the electrical wiring is set up. That's how it was explained to us by Sean. Um, Can I stop you for a sec? Sure. Does, does that have anything to do with the current project or is that totally separate? From totally the separate. That's what I thought. Totally separate. Um, Developing the Tucker well, it's Sean's opinion, and I believe he has some outside opinions to support it, that within a few years we're going to be right back in the same situation we are right now, even with three wells drilled. So he wants to get that in as an advanced priority. The new water tower, ours, is, is old and getting older and can probably be retained as a backup supply, but we're going to need a new primary, in his opinion. Um, finance the 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 ERP system I don't think that's the right term for a municipal system but it's the one I'm familiar with that the town uses is very old it's about to become unsupported um, by the vendor and they are essentially this is looking at moving from an own it model to a licensing model is what's being contemplated here but there are transition costs as well the library had five in, really only one of them was a, a or only a few of them really kind of hit the radar as being large enough. Jim Hilton had some really interesting things from recreation. Um, the splash pad is one that I'm sure will <laughs> draw some comment <laughs> from the council, but he actually believes it would pay for itself in terms of enrollment in the summer camp program. Um, one thing he did go to some lengths to point out is that most of most of the rec department is self-sustaining in terms of the revenue that comes in, so that's his wish list. And that's really all of the high points from what we've seen so far. I believe Diane got a couple of additional requests in yesterday or the day before. 
that we haven't had a chance to go through in any detail yet, but I mean, as you can just see by looking at this, the, the, the numbers are pretty um, sobering, <coughs> and a lot of it just has to do with things that have been lingering for a very long time, and particularly um, Rick Mulaski and, and Sean Gregg are trying to get some of those priorities to the forefront so we can start putting money away for them. Questions? So I have a couple questions. First is, especially with the police dispatch and the radio system, mm -hmm. but in general for these items, are there dependencies among them? Like if they get the, if they replace the obsolete radios, do they have to replace the dispatch or vice versa? Um, that didn't come up actually in, in the hearing, so I'm not sure. Okay. And for the pump station life safety and the other things, didn't we ask, and they said that the, the remaining fund balance wasn't earmarked or anything? There wasn't anything planned, I believe. Maybe it was you, Dan? I'm not quite sure. I'm just surprised that such large <laughs> dollar figures didn't come up if we, if we actually did ask that question. I thought we did. I remember the question being asked. And, okay. and I, I mean, I, I don't have an answer for you on that. They, I mean, this. And I believe this was put together prior to the um, prior to that hearing. Okay. I have some questions. Yeah. Um, did the department heads talk about using the funds, or are they looking for down the road as taxation to pay for this? Sure. Um, just for sixteen seventeen, you're talking one point five million dollars. I just did the math too. Um, Replacing the radio equipment, we just went through body cameras, and I stress that that should actually come out of the fund. Hindsight being 2020, now that we need radio equipment, um, that probably should come out of the fund. But fund, but we're going to also depleting these funds down to pennies on the dollar. So, and I think that was part of the concern. Is they, they there's some committee members on the on the CIP that I know are uh, very staunch at keeping flat budgets, and if we don't use funds and we need to have this done there's only other one other way of acquiring funds and that's to, through taxation well, so the next meeting that we have is where we're actually going to go through them one by one and vote so that i expect will come up but if you look at the way some of it is laid out there's there's definitely a forward looking aspect to a lot of it it's not very few things are an immediate mm -hmm. one year hit I think the, I mean, the roof on the DPW building, because no existing fund exists for that, is an immediate one-year hit. But the majority of it was essentially looking at trying to maintain the fund balances over some reasonable time horizon. The, okay, thank you. I, I'm very happy to see this. We have, uh, I've done the budget committee for three years, and nev nothing has come before us like this before, which is great. Um, the only other one that I had a question about was the roads. Um, this town is notorious for not wanting to pay for paving roads. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's coming back to haunt us, basically. And again, we've only put $125,000 aside, and Rick is saying he needs $365,000. Um, when and where do we decide to say, okay, $125,000 isn't enough anymore, and maybe we get to bump it to two hundred dollars every year as a, uh, to, to, because we're behind the eight ball all the time. And he paves half of Ash Swamp Road and the only reason why I stopped is ran out of money you know yep. and which is a shame when you know another 300 yards down the road and you're all done <laughs> well, this is where it, it's I think a little unfortunate that we don't have time to talk before the CIP has it, its meeting with the department heads because it's a valid concern but the general tenor, I, I don't want to speak for the other people on CIP at all, the general tenor of the meeting is, okay, that's what you have to say. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Nice. Thank you. Move on to the next one. There's not, there aren't really a lot of voices crying out for, why isn't this more? So mm -hmm. it, it's, again, it would probably be beneficial in future years if we had some chance to discuss this. I mean, and the town council and the school board, for that matter, as well, so that the, the representatives could bring those concerns to the department heads. The problem is that the time frame, at least this year, for doing this was so compressed. Mm -hmm. Right. We, yeah. we, Diane, got these requests from the department heads basically within seven days of when we had the, um, the 
quasi hearing where they all came in and made their cases. Sure. Okay. I can tell you from when we the meeting of the chairs that the biggest concern from Steve um, and even Phil was we've got to do something more with the roads. And I mean, they were talking a, a lot more than 125,000. I mean, it's been stressed since yeah, my first year. No, the they, they were talking about a lot more. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'll be honest with you, my too, I was surprised at that, that number. I, the number I heard was double that. Well, Rick is also looking at it down the future. If you pave a road, the road's smoother to, pay, to plow. You're not beating up the plow machines, going down bumpy roads or pothole roads or whatever. So then you don't have to turn around and get in, you know, an well, F-250 with a plow. Right. Um, every other year because you just beat the heck out of the front end of it you know so it, it's kind of a twofold situation <laughs> chicken or the egg e- exactly <laughs> exactly no and I, I will tell you too that one of the things that's coming out with the road improvement is is they are going to I wasn't it the UNH he was talking about that at a couple of meetings ago mm-hmm. bringing in hey, they're gonna do the surveys and really try to stress where we really need to put our assets into that and then really figure out what that cost is going to be because, to your point, that's not even going to pay for what we have to get done this next year. Because I think um, last I heard it was close to $450,000 it was going to take to repair most of the roads. So, okay. Thank you again. Uh, welcome. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Uh, so yeah. one last question. Yeah. Since this is my first year, what, what is the effect of the vote with respect to these dollar figures? Like, does this mean that... Sure. If you approve it, that they can they can go over or not go over. The CIP is basically an advisory body to the town council, um, also to the school board, but not in quite as a, so official a role. So <coughs> CIP, it's our we exist for a statutory reason in order for the town to use impact fees from development to fund some of this. The it has to exist and in a sense since one of the town councilors sits on it it's sort of a preview for the rest of them but ultimately these recommendations go to the council and it's for them to decide to accept reject or modify what's recommended by CIP but it also comes back around obviously what the council puts forward comes to us and then it's for us to decide to accept reject or modify so there's nothing binding like if you reject something then it's not that they can't apply no, impact fees for that it. item it has nothing to do with that okay correct and there's no 10 percent rule or any fancy it's a recommendation okay. and I, yeah enough. and i think that's i mean i don't mean to put the air quotes but they can recommend to the town council what they think should be happen so and it's then truly it's up to the town council it's absolutely i mean to give you context what the council put in the budget last year was pretty much what cip put forward the, I asked Diane for those numbers this morning just to verify that. And although the exact splits don't line up, the dollars were pretty much the same. Okay. So at the very least, uh, you know, they've been maybe moving it around and mixing it around to kind of fill in certain gaps. But the bottom line number is the one that they always still try to maintain as far as the idea of staying with the flat budgets. And Now that uh, said, the bottom line number last year was a good deal smaller right. than what you see embodied. Sure. Yeah. Be interesting. Well, seriously, Dan, I do have to thank you. I think this is the best detail we've had. I mean, to Blue's point, I've been here for three years. This is the best detail. And not only that, um, I am pleased a lot of the forward thinking that's starting to happen, not only with the the town and the CIP. I mean, it's... I mean, some of these projects may not come up for four or five years, but at least we're thinking about it now rather than, oh, what do we do now? Let's go talk about another emergency expenditure. Sorry. That's great. Okay. Any other questions on this? No. So Thank your you, next Dan. meeting is tomorrow? Tomorrow night. Or tomorrow afternoon. We somehow have gotten back on the afternoon instead of evening schedule. Um, and then when is it all final with the CIP? Tomorrow or the next one? We have to, I mean, the, our recommendations go to the council at their f- meeting on October the 1st, 1st, 2nd, I forget what. Because their budget has to be done he has, uh, by October 15th, he has to present it to the town council. The schools, uh, again, they were supposed to have decided some things at their last meeting, but I heard their last meeting got canceled at the last minute, so yeah. I'm not sure where that leaves things. I'll give you an update tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Because I literally got it when I walked in the door. Um, so as far as the town, um, I know Steve sent us this memo, but I did want to just make sure we kind of looked over. Um, I sent it out to you guys. But 
Um, they had a fund balance left over last year of $79,000, which compared to two years ago was half a million dollars. So it's definitely shrunk. Um, so the, the padding or so to speak, the surplus that's been there is not nearly as strong. Um, you know, so to Dan, your point is they came a lot closer last year. Um, uh, and based on some of these things in the CIP, they're going to come even closer. But part of that is also using fund balance not to buy the tax rate yeah, down. Correct. But to use it. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so I'll pass this out to you guys. I know it was very last minute, so I just wanted to get this to you as well. Um, this is from Christine um, from the school. Um, she basically sent me um, where they finished the year at. So they finished the year at um, roughly, I think she said the surplus the last time we were here, $643,000. What you'll see down below, right above where it says total revenues, you'll see fund balance to reduce taxes, 493000 Because we voted in... Um, March to take $100,000 um, to one fund, and then I think it was another 50000 to the technology fund. Mm -hmm. So the reason why that the retained fund balance is highlighted is on the 17th, they were supposed to discuss um, the contingency fund that they now have, and they can pull up to a certain amount in there. So um, depending on what they decide to pull out will be what the tax rate is done. And the school board has to, to work on that. And I think they're going to do that on Thursday, hopefully. Um, but what that basically means is right now, there's a $0.41 cent tax rebate going back before their fund balance. So then she made a chart down below that said if they decide to pull X amount of dollars, that will then take away so much from where it is. So, for example, if they decided to take 100000 out of the fund balance, that would leave it with 27 cents would go back towards the taxes. If they decide to take 300,000, then they actually would be a penny that we would owe them. So um, they don't have an idea of what they're gonna do yet. That's where the school board has to figure that out. Um, but that's kind of an update of where they were. So the, the end over balance is kind of what we thought. Now, I don't have all the detail, fund by fund, um, and we'll get that, I'm sure, soon. But th this at least gives us an idea of where they finished and where it's going to be. Questions? Does that make sense as far as how the chart and everything with the taxes and how that'll be? So I'm sure in October we can get a final mm -hmm. update once the school board votes on it and everything like that. But this is pending school board not are acting on the fund balance. They haven't done that yet. And this is the memo she gave the school board. So this is almost the exact same thing they have. So they, they're going to be discussing that and figure out what they need to do. So I just want to stress this, the tax impact effect is based on prior year numbers. It's not, we don't know the next valuation yet. We don't. No, know. it's just based on yes. basically what we took out of the budget. We would give them 41 cents back. It's kind of like a rebate. And we did, how much was it last year? I want to say it was, I can look. I don't remember. But it was another, I mean, it was like 50 cents or something yeah. like that. Um, so based on that amount, but like I said, this is the first year they can actually pull and put it in this contingency fund, and I'm sure they will. So I'm sure that'll, we'll lower that. I mean, it'd probably be down to, I would say, I mean, if it's over 20 cents, I'll be surprised. Okay. Um, and like I said, hopefully we'll get uh, a little bit better update once we get uh, a little bit closer to the budget season, but the school board still had to vote on some of this stuff. Um, real quickly before we go on to the rest of it, you all saw that we the DRA took our motion and everything's all good and they allowed us to use the money because that's why construction and Traffic is a little crazy over there on 108. Um, so let's real quick go into the schedule for the rest of the year. And I'll, I'll kind of let you guys know where some dates are starting to line up. So October 15th is when Steve has to present to the, the uh, town council his budget. And then they go through. And then by the 15th of November, 
um, which I'm sure last year we got it a few days early. We would probably have it by the 12th or the 13th of November. They have to present the town budget to us. So what I have right now tentatively, just in case they don't get it to us by the 13th, I have scheduled the 23rd and the 30th of November to meet with the town council and the departments. It's the first two or the last two Mondays. Of October? Of November. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, November. I'm looking at it going, that's Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> like, Dave, come Where on. You on a Friday night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, November 23rd and the 30th, those would be the town council um, to go through all the department heads and go through the actual budget line by line. December 7th right now, I have set up for Christine to present the school budget to us. That's session one. Um, if we need a second session, I have it scheduled tentative for the 21st. And then the 14th of December as a Monday would be the town budget hearing downstairs in the auditorium or even up here, depending on the amount of people. I think last year it was up here. 14th is the, uh, the town hearing. Looking at the calendar for January, I know there's a lot of things going on that week after Christmas, so I, that's not a good time for any of us. Um, looking at January right now, um, tentatively, we're probably looking at the 4th. The 11th is the last day we can do a um, public, or the last Monday we can do a public hearing for the school. We can push it, I believe, until the end of that week if we can't put it on a Monday. Um, but as the following week is Martin Luther King, um, that would probably be the best time is the 11th. Um, so if we get all these done in November and December, um, then we really only have the public hearing. And then obviously if there's any bond hearings or anything like that, which we don't know, I'm sure there could be something based on what they're discussing. I just don't know <clears throat> if they're going to make it to the March vote. What is the date that they have to have anything on the ballot, like a warrant article, for instance? For a warrant article, all warrant articles have to be, I want to say it's January. I just had the dates. Um, it's like the second or third. Third Tuesday in January. So that would be the, the 19th. 19th. And then the recommendations. So, yeah. So um, the bond hearing, if they have a bond hearing, has to be 20 days before um, the public hearing, which is a deliberative session. So that would also be that same week. So that's why, like, if we can get everything done by the 11th, that way if there's any uh, budget hearings or bond hearings or any uh, last minute, because um, they, they petition warrant articles and things like that can go right up until I want to say it's 13 or 15 days right before the deliberative session. Right. Um, so um, they have to give us their budget by November 23rd, I believe, from the school. So we'll have that, but as far as the Warren articles, the school, the, town. the school has to have it to us by November. I think their meeting is the 20th, 19th. So the 23rd by that Monday, they'll have this, the, town, the school budget to us. But the town, their budget has to be posted by the end of December. So that's why we want to have the hearing if we can in December, because by the end of December, that one has to be posted. The school, it's different rules that whole SB2 thing. I'm sure as I'm saying all these dates, I might have gotten one wrong with, <laughs> with the difference. But <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Um, so that's what I'm kind of looking at right now for the date. So I just wanted you guys to kind of pencil them in because that's kind of when it gets a little, little hectic. Um, if you're going to be um, out of town or not be able to make the meeting, I'm sure we can do some call-ins and I would actually request we do some call-ins because... Um, some of these meetings could be a couple hours, three hours long, going through budget by budget. Um, you know, I know work happens, so if it does, let's try to do what we can to call in um, so that we can get you all caught up. But 
we got one month of a little quiet and then it gets a little crazy yep. so to be clear the, there's do we have anything scheduled for the month of october i have october 26 scheduled um we can talk about that later because i don't know if it's necessary that we have one in october um we can if we want to get ready for it but we're not we're not going to get any numbers until november I mean, we can you can watch the the meeting, um, the town council meeting before the end of October, and we'll kind of get an idea what they're looking at it budget wise. Sure. Um, but school wise, I yep. I think it's going to be the eleventh hour with some of their stuff because they're, they're they have a backwards calendar they're working on, and they're really pushing. They've been working a lot of hours. I mean, I know you know Craig, you're doing the superintendent. I mean, they've been doing that and then the facilities and all that stuff. So they got a lot going on. Um, so that's kind of what I see as far as, as dates the rest of the year. Any questions, comments, concerns, et cetera, with those dates? And I know it's like five weeks in a row. I know I have a time I won't be here on the 7th. I'll be in Colorado. If you're skiing, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Working. Um, okay. Did you say that we we're going to get numbers from the town on – November 12th ish or they were having a meeting that week no we're the, we'll get their budgets due to us by like the 12th 13th or it's due to us by the 15th but because that's on a weekend okay. we our first meeting won't be until the 23rd okay. yeah that's what I was. yeah we'll get the budget from them yeah I know you're gonna yeah I know <laughs> um, so the 23rd and the 30th would be where we go through the town and depending on how everything goes on the 23rd um, the 30th may not be as long I know last year was only about an hour uh, just going through the rest of the departments but based on what i'm seeing on the the cip i have a feeling it could be some longer sessions that's, with the that's town the monday before and the monday after thanksgiving mm -hmm. correct okay yeah yep we so, stay local <laughs> i'm gonna say no. <laughs> i'm getting a new kitchen so i'm staying local i want to use it um anything else for that Okay, then the only other thing I want to put out there is, as we're going to start getting into the meat of this, um, we had some some incidents come up last year, and I just want to make sure that we don't have the same thing this year. If you have any questions for any department heads or Steve or Christine or anything like that, um, one, please, let's try to do it in the public forum if we have to. Um, if you do have questions afterwards and you have a question for one of the department heads, Please CC me, and it should go to Steve. It shouldn't go to any of the department heads because he wants to funnel that information as well so we're not just going random all over the place. So um, let's try to make sure um, that we do that. I know last year we had some – we got some emails on that one. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> nope. I, I Just saying. I just want to put it out there now so we don't have to – Sometimes gets mixed up. Um, so we uh, – <laughs> So we don't have that same issue this year, but and especially um, copy Mickey and I on any of the emails if you do have them. And if you do have questions, send them to us, and then we'll get the answers and get them out to all of you guys as well so that we have um, electronic copy and, and, and paper and all that kind of stuff. And then we can make sure we talk about it in the public forums as well. Um, but there was just some behind-the-scenes stuff last year I want to try to avoid um, just so that I can keep my hand on everything. Okay. Um, anything else you guys have tonight? Okay, so before we go to the next step, do we want to, is there a motion out there to cancel the October meeting? I move to cancel the October meeting. <laughs> do I have a second? I will second that. Not All in favor, me. say aye. 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 Unanimous. So I will make sure I let Kathy know there will be no October 26th meeting. So... Just make sure we pay attention to the school board and the town council because when we come back on the 23rd, it'll be pedal to the metal, mm -hmm. okay? Um, there are no other questions. If I have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. See you in a couple months. <laughs> <laughs>